So I just want to make a note to New Zealanders that something quite exciting has happened. So since I've lodged my um, High Court claim on May 28th, I lobbied all the diplomats of the United Nations member states with the claim, um, advising them of what is happening with this massive use of a, a chemical weapons grade toxic torture poison that has been dropped indiscriminately all through New Zealand's waterways, streams, rivers, lakes, you name it. And this has systematically um, run up into our town water supplies, our city water supplies, and our agriculture water supplies. So you've got, um, you're torturing, we have been torturing animals right through our bush to death. They don't die for a period of 12 to 124 hours. Um, that's what's usually recorded. Uh, and everything in the areas where they're dropping uh, is completely exterminated. It's death. Now I'm talking from maggots to mammals. It's birds, it's possums and pigs and deer and, and all the little uh, invertebrates, all the insects, everything dead. What is most concerning is what they've modelled in the New Zealand bush is a way to kill populations that could be inflicted on human populations. So it's amazing to see today that the since I've been lobbying this case internationally, the Natural Resource Defence Council have launched um, this week their own prosecution at a local level against the use of a, a nerve gas a nerve gas grade toxic chemical weapon that has been sprayed all over their fruit and vegetables all across America. This is a, a terrifying reality for people to come to grips with, but we are amidst one of the world's greatest ever crimes. There is a crime syndicate that is involved at the top of most of our um, governments, our groups, in the main countries that are a part of this cabal, and they are running an extermination program, okay? If you poison the people's water, agriculture and human water supply with a toxic uh, chemical weapons grade poison, it, it becomes a loaded gun, okay? Water is intelligence. It's 90% of our body. It is the life force within us. It keeps us alive. This uh, this chemical changes the mitochondria of the DNA. So it, it the water comes into the systems of living beings and either tortures it to death or completely changes its uh, structure. Um, and, you know, a, a, as a hormone disruptor, it, it causes miscarriages. I've had another account of um, of proximity to 1080 um, in its packages um, in a warehouse leading to a miscarriage this morning. Um, to a miscarriage directly after um, immediate proximity with bagged 1080 poison. This is an incredibly energetically toxic substance. Okay, so... And 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 a range and I and I've spoken before about one of the um one of the indigenous chiefs um Tata Kurubin, who I um, represented uh, in the rainforest to the United Nations um, and lobbied around the world in his defence. He spoke at the House of Lords back in two thousand and eleven, and he he begged them. I've posted this video a number of times. He begged them to stop spraying a deadly chemical herbicide on his people that led to the death of all that lived. He described how in the, for the first time in thousands of years, his indigenous people were having to travel to a supermarket, thousands of miles to a supermarket, because their land would not grow food. That was used by the fake war on drugs. This is the American Food and Drug Administration, and they are backed in with a formal contract agreement on biosecurity to MPI. They are backed in, if not running, Osprey. This is the next foundation. That's This is Zero Invasive Predators, the ZIP Foundation. And I said on posts yesterday, I've been investigating the individuals on all of these organizations, and they are amongst the pedigree of board members and business elite in this country. And they have been procured with an incredible sum of money. This is a very, very well-financed kill program. It is a eugenics program. You can't argue that it's not because if you drop toxic chemical weapons-grade poison in a country's water system systematically and the new government, whose decision I, um, I have my uh, local case to overturn, are administering new levels that will cause mass torturous suffering and death to animals all across the bush and it will be uh, the agriculture industry 
and the human uh, water supply affected. The helicopters are dropping this systematically in the town water supplies in the in the areas where they're experimenting this. This is this is uh, save the birds lie cover up or you know kill the possums who only eat vegetables and fruit um, and plant matter. They don't they don't they no threat to the birds whatsoever. And the ferrets uh, live off rats unless after 1080 poisoning they change their diet to the birds because the rats have been killed by 1080 poisoning. The that you know that this is a massive lie. It's a massive fraud. So is the TV in the possums because none of the data substantiates it being used as an excuse and a cover to cover all of your water supply and your agriculture systems in those areas and as an experimental kill program okay because people have had miscarriages and are getting a raft of diseases i, I mean the herald almost romances romances us into death these days bowel cancer breast cancer, brain cancer, every other kind of death and cancer. Um, but it's okay because here's our pretty marketing and you should feel good about dying young of bowel cancer because this country is in a lot of shit. Excuse my language. Okay. The... <laughs> You know, the other thing is, what I'm concerned about is that they've started, since my case, they've started media that they're going to run artificial intelligence robots in the bush to kill everything that moves with paintballs. But uh, the problem with that is whether they're dropping it from helicopters into the water supply or they're shooting it from artificial robots into the water supply, one is very obvious that we can see right now, we can prosecute, we can stop, we can hold them accountable for what they've done because it's just plain to see. Okay, but if they were able to transfer into artificial robot use, which is totally hooked up to the brain of half of parliament, I swear to God. Um, okay, a little bit of an abstract, but um, if they can do that, then they can, you know, these robots can, you know, kill a few possums and totally dump masses of poison in the water supply overnight. That's what's happening. This natural resource defense case shows that right across America, they are using a nerve grade toxic pesticide poison on all the fruit and vegetables. This is an extermination program of epic perform, uh, pr pr proportions. And coupled with the fact that they're setting off Volca... And I, I'm sorry, this is a big leap for people to hear, but you have to spend a little time reading US patents because the technology exists patented uh, and well-developed to be able to cause EMF frequency changes that enable them to set off volcanoes, set off earthquakes. You can, if you're just an, an oil exploration company, you can set off an earthquake. You just need to explore for some oil with your latest technology and set off an earthquake with just a little bit of too much of a zappy beam going down there. I mean, it's pretty simple, actually. So, you know, we, we do face a risk right now of Mount Taranaki and Mount Ropehu. There are, there are volcanoes being set off all around the world. This is not weird. And, well, it is weird, but it's planned. Okay, systematically planned one volcano after the other. Check out Bali right now, today, and Australia be, Australia's flight's been completely disrupted. Hawaii, Guatemala, Galapagos Islands, now um, the Arctic. You know, this is a, they, they, there is a combination happening here. So what I want you to start thinking about, and I know, you know, I've worked at the front line of the worst, some of the worst crimes around the world for the last 10 years on mechanisms to try and stop it, which is why I was able to pioneer um, the interpretation, a world first interpretation of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court to give us a legal mechanism, the only existing legal mechanism possible to, um, to prosecute those who uh, industrially contaminate the life systems of the population but also who bring about the physical destruction of national groups considered like uh, coral reefs or but natural bush ecosystems or the rainforest, the Arctic, uh, ecosystems like that, which in their own form are a national group without need for human causality. But in this case, the law obviously also very much applies to actions which bring about the physical destruction of the human population or their choice to inflict conditions of life like this toxic poison on the human population. That led me, uh, while I developed cases for that law across the rainforest, coral reefs, the Arctic, that led me to um, to understand that uh, a, an argument to prevent the crime is a very different culture from the ICC that exists currently, which is focused on uh, really investigations to uh, on past crimes. You know, like, so an African warlord, uh, they've really focused on that sort of thing, um, going out and shooting 20,000 people in a day. Um 
whereas this is a long-term extermination or genocide and um, being caused by chemical contaminants and deliberately, as intent is defined by the Rome Statute under Article 30, that they just have to be aware that within the ordinary course of, um, of events of them dropping this toxic chemical poison, uh, obviously, into the waterways, that they will bring about uh, the, this sort of consequence. Um, not even having knowledge of it. The, the, the requirement is not that they have knowledge of the harm, but just awareness that within the ordinary course of events, this could be brought about, you know. So it's very loose and very easily argued, their complicity and liability. So um, my point is, is that last year in the elections I lobbied or I, I you know, I promoted a key policy for an international criminal court for sustainability because the law that I've dedicated the last seven years to interpreting uh, enables 120 nations in the world to have uh, to bring legal consequence or individual criminal liability individual criminal liability you can't sue a government or a company you must sue the individual decision makers who are criminally liable for the decision to destroy lives and destroy ecosystems so this law that i've pioneered um, it can be applied now it's existing law it doesn't need any new votes and it can hold these criminals to accountability. They can be summoned to court immediately. They can be arrested immediately. Their fortunes can be frozen and seized immediately by issuing an arrest warrant. And this is existing ratified law in New Zealand. Okay, so my proposition is that an ICC for sustainability is um, immediately assembled. And because I've lobbied it for so long, this is not a new concept to people at the UN, to member states. It'd be very easy to get a majority vote right now with the current uh, mix at the United Nations to establish an international criminal, criminal court for sustainability. Now, if New Zealand was to bring this crime to an end, then New Zealand is set up, and this is why I guess I came home after largely 14 years abroad, set up to to establish an ICC for sustainability urgently with intimate expertise on this crime, on this particular crime. And what it would mean is that 120 nations would have judicial recourse if their local jurisdictions, their local judicial jurisdictions, shield those who are criminally liable from accountability for this crime. And that is both from the government and the private sector because this is a well-entrenched collusion between government and private sector. People who believe that they have a sort of a godlike power to control the population bomb and um, and to exterminate humanity, and uh, I I believe definitely that that there are countries that can bring forward uh, evidence of what I'm speaking about of this singularity, um, certain people being chipped into that singularity and being part part human part man already. This technology has been in development for a long time, um, and it is certainly what is being applied here. You know what really concerns me, and I've spoken about this a lot, is the the helicopters. Um, I really, I really think the councillor who came out in the paper yesterday needs to be a lot more concerned uh, about the EMF frequency technology that could be used on people in Remuera as they fly over you at night repeatedly, um, more than just the noise keeping you awake. At least if you're awake, your cognitive function might be a little bit protected. But you know the 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 power of AI technology, and I know law firms who have invoices for ninety million dollars of AI technology investment in this country. So. So there are people here who are well entrenched in this new form of intelligence which gives them godlike powers over the population and potentially a sort of a psychopathy state of mind where they are happy to exterminate most people and I get it I definitely have moments where I think oh my god everyone in, in humanity is terrible terrible person but at the end of the day this is a crime it's criminal even if you don't like everyone in the planet you don't have the right to kill them all that's really quite simple um, so so look, I think <sighs> definitely this claim is progressing through the court, which is the only way that we can get resolution. However, it is also progressing in the hands of some of the most powerful people in the country who, if in their integrity, can bring about the end to this crime and protect the population. This is definitely of international level of concern now. Um, there are eyes on this. This is not, we are not sort of suffering in silence anymore. So that's really important. And this case is sparking other cases, I believe, around the world to come to force. 
But what is really important is that we consider that we are going to need an international criminal court for sustainability because ultimately there are mechanisms mechanisms in place to stop all uh, local judicial actions that don't have the recourse to the ICC. And it's really important, therefore, that we launch a, a, a special arm of the ICC dedicated to preventative prosecutions of this nature to stop the harm, to protect populations around the world. Uh, and and that is a that's a completely different culture to the one that already exists. So uh, it's a really important suggestion that we consider bringing that to force, which could be done very very quickly, I believe. Okay, so that's my update. It is to my understanding that the poisoning has currently stopped. It is. To my best of my knowledge that no uh, artificial intelligence killer robots um, have been released into our bush to kill everything that lives. There is clearly a systematic effort to eliminate the, the natural food supplies and the natural water supplies for the people of New Zealand to forage for food and drink safe water out of the bush, which is absolutely um, a, you know, a founding country right. And uh, obviously it's a human right, you know. So... Um, I I am waiting on a few updates, but I am um, progressing on the claim for interim interim relief, and then obviously the the greater hearing is in August on this matter. Um, but the you know the the current effort is to make all of those organisations involved in this extermination program aware that their crime has now been seen, that they are dropping a toxic torture chemical weapons grade poison into the water supply of our animals. Uh, wild animals, our livestock, our insects, our birds, and uh, our the human population. That water is intelligent; it has memory. And the moment you uh, put a toxic chemical uh, weapon poison into that water, you restructure that water immediately. It doesn't become uh, you later on test to see if uh, 1080 still exists. The water effectively becomes 1080. It just completely changes its frequency and structure. Anyone of any intellect uh, understands understands the uh, research into the the in incredible power of water to keep our entire bodies alive basically um, and uh, balance the energy of the earth is um, is with that capability to to restructure and immediately become the frequency of 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 its memory which is that poison which is why New Zealand has the health epidemic that it does because this is the only um, Additive, well it's not, it's part of a combination of chemical additives to our ecosystems which will bring about that consequence of stress cells, which is TB or cancer, whatever you want to call it, but that's what it is, it's the same. It's not a contagious disease, it's a, it's a reaction to contaminants in the ecosystem that are causing that harm. Uh, the propaganda level, I mean at least in communist Russia, you know, they knew that um, they, they were, um, that the government propaganda was government propaganda. The concerning thing in New Zealand is that no one knows that there's sort of a zombie apocalypse going on, excuse my, you know, colloquial uh, sayings, but um, that this harm is being deliberately inflicted. People are smiling you towards your assassination. And it's, uh, well, I mean... It's uh, beyond comprehension for most people. I get that. It's still every day working on this intensely, discovering, um, you know, staff who, had run, who have run the kill program in New Zealand, then being transferred to a seat in the White House as policy advisor. Well, that's policy advisor on a population eugenics program because that's what his expertise has become without naming names outside of my poetry. Uh, so the, the fact is that well, we have we have uh, a crime of epic perform proportions going on, and uh, what New Zealand is going to need, I'm just going to keep repeating this. We are going to need a second Reserve Bank body corporate, which the legislation allows us to have appointed. So, if the High Court give that judicial direction, we have a huge step forward to save the country. We will need to extend that secondary mon monetary supply, which is digital credits interchangeable with the NZD, so of similar value, and um, that will be needed. To to finance farmers out of what will be an inevitable crash of the industry because we, uh, we can't sell poisoned products exported to the world. We must transition. It's a seven-year transition to organics where our products will be the best quality in the world. But that needs to be countrywide, industry-wide now. There is no choice. Even Chinese and Japanese companies have refused to buy our dog meat, our pet food, based on the fact that they know it's poisoned with 1080, okay?
And if you consider all the times, the three times where there's been 1080 scares and town water supplies, like uh, like a terrorist act, like an individual person or and threatened to put in the milk supply um, or what have you, or put on the steps of parliament, you've got a situation where um, it's called terrorism. You had the mayor of one city saying anyone who put 1080 in the water is a terrorist. They've got to be insane. Our government's doing that to us. You know, our government, our existing leaders are doing that right now or trying. My lobbying and my case has stopped them. It is on pause. And it's very important to stay on pause because that is a, an action taken in the name of God. Okay? So stay grounded in that. Do not stand for the terrorism um, issues in the court. Stunningly horrific. But this has to stop. We need to own this crime. We need to make a seven-year plan for transition. And and we uh, we need to be very careful right now about managing our, our water, what water we drink, how it's filtered, uh, to make sure that it doesn't have this toxicity in it. Um, stop the fluoride as well. And uh, get to a point where the population can heal from this and we can survive and come out of it stronger. If we own it and we lead the world in transition, you will find that right around the world, as I said, I'm intimate with this happening across the indigenous people in the rainforest. They have been exterminated. Their land has been killed deliberately by these herbicides dropped by the American administration that kill everything that moves. Imagine owning rainforest lands as an indigenous tribe and suddenly discovering your land no longer grows food. Having the US uh, fly over you, drop a kill everything herbicide and uh, cause half of your people to die of cancer and desert their homes and split up everywhere across the bush. That's what happened. It's been an absolute tragedy. And I used to sit in the Amazon and just think, how can these people be so evil? You know, the, the, the rainforest is, is the indigenous people's ancestral home of thousands of years. You know, they are the one of the most ancient cultures in the world. The Munduruku people who I've got a case for are probably one, you know, one of the founding uh, groups of people in the world. And they are being systematically, industrially, uh, toxically exterminated. And and to, n to come back to New Zealand and find that happening here is just, a, whew, it's beyond shocking. But these people must be held accountable. And people need to start opening their hearts and minds to the reality of this pure evil of people who obviously feel empowered to uh, reduce a population out of some sense of um, false delusion that they're sort of God or of some sort of special, I don't know, uh, reason that they, they got their money and might and whatever. Well, it happened through uh, an unclean money system, okay? Bad people in charge of the money supply, perverting it for private interests well above public good. There's a balance. I get it. I'm not into homogenization. I definitely don't agree with socialism or communism. I love entrepreneurship. I love making business. I love uh, being able to make money. I agree with that um, inequality in a way that is absolutely fair so that you you get what you give but no one is suffering or without dignity. There is a balance that this system needs to come into alignment with. Anyway, I just wanted to give you that update. I think it's really exciting that the Natural Resource Defence Council are taking a local case. I've got my local case. Um, I hope that Australia takes a local case. And I really uh, hope that the, the powers that be in New Zealand uh, will listen to me. Um, that for the last seven years I have been around the world lobbying at the UN to member states and, and anyone who will listen at the top of business and industry that we need an international criminal court for sustainability. And my legal argument gives the basis for immediate range of prosecutions to protect ecosystems and all life around the world. This is an incredible opportunity to set things right. So I hope you can take the time to, to consider that whilst what is happening is absolute criminality and super evil beyond comprehension, there is a solution and a way forward and it takes us seven years to heal. Actually, I think our bodies heal even quicker. I had a conversation with someone yesterday about um, about a cell, and if it's completely cleansed and it's not taking in any contaminants, then the, the age that humans live to in biblical times was not surprising at all, like 800 years, 1,000 years. I mean, 
don't want to get you all excited about immortality, but the fact is that if we weren't deliberately contaminated, we would have a lot healthier minds, a lot healthier bodies, a lot more wonderful lives. Um, this has been a siege uh, inflicted on us by a very evil group of people, and I very much hope that they're brought to accountability. Okay, I'll talk soon.